Hi, I'm Dane, and I'm here with my good friend Adam. Hi. Welcome to Peeling Off the Bark, where every week Adam and I share a piece of music and discuss what the song means to us and how it has impacted our lives. Music is a great way to start conversations about things that usually get left unsaid. We hope that by having open and frank conversations on the podcast, we can encourage others to do the same. So, Dan. Hello. This week it's your turn. Hello. This week it's your turn to share a song. And by song, I mean song. <laughs> <laughs> it is It is my turn. Um, and I've got an absolute corker for you as well. Um, oh. I'm hoping that you've heard it before. You might have done. I can't remember um, if I've like showed it to you before or maybe you've heard it. <laughs> In your it's own very, way. It's very possible. Before you do share it, mm-hmm. um, I'll just quickly re-explain for the, any new listeners who have tuned in what this is all about. Um, so this is a podcast where we share one of the, one of us two, me or Dan, um, will share a song and talk about our experience, maybe through a story or just through like a time in my life or whatever, where that song what that song kind of reminds us of, if it's kind of nostalgic for us at that point, or just like, that's the time we discovered it. So like, it's like the soundtrack of that time or whatever. Um, and yeah, just sharing our experiences around that and why that song was important with, and correct us if I'm wrong here, Dan, and feel free to add anything <laughs> else, with the intention of opening a sort of platform um, where people can talk openly about their own experiences, even though some of those experiences might not be the best, but um, I suppose it's quite therapeutic and um, and 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 good to share those experiences and talk to people and realise that yeah you might not be the only person experiencing those feelings. Absolutely, one hundred percent. I think that's the the main thing. Really, is that um, with music in general, like it automatically opens up so many um, avenues to for discussion so whether that be just about the song or whether that be as you say like a story a memory um or anything like it could be deep it might just be something that makes you laugh or um scratches an itch um but yeah it's it's uh, <laughs> it's a good opportunity to, to have a, a talk and a catch up um which is what me and you are using this for but it's also a great Absolutely. way that we can kind of speak to the um anyone else out there that might be listening as well so definitely and thank you for that little callback to last week's episode i like that <laughs> uh, you're very welcome mate <laughs> the itch has been thoroughly scratched i do hope so <laughs> <laughs> um i so with this one um i kind of i suppose i should do a little bit of scene setting before we we'll kind of dive straight into it um so this is from uh, a, a period of my life um, when I was quite young, so I was kind of a, a teenager, early teenager, um, growing up, kind of that kind of discovery period of kind of finding out who you are and all this and uh, making friends, but also like kind of first relationships as well. Um, so I think whenever I hear this song, it kind of just takes us back to that moment in that like time period in general but there's also like a specific kind of day and time and place that is kind of stamped with that song as well which I find is quite unusual for me because I, I tend not to have specific kind of visual memories that are brought back when I listen to a song I don't know about you but it yeah sometimes it's just like a feeling or a smell or a taste whereas yeah, this yeah. it's like, like a time period like a stretch of time as opposed to like one specific event of one specific day yeah exactly um and with this one i suppose it could be a case that my memories warped it and it wasn't even that day that i first heard the song or anything like that but <laughs> like for whatever reason it always takes us back to this visual memory um so yeah i think at this point what i'll do is i'll share the song with you and we'll go away and, and have a listen um and Can't then wait. Yeah, we'll come back and we'll have a, a bit of a chat about it. You can tell us how you feel about it and I'll tell you a little bit about like why I picked it and stuff like that. So Sounds good. Yeah, let's get into it. All right. Um Uh I've heard the first note okay. and I know that I've definitely heard it. <laughs> and it hundred percent heard it through you. Oh brilliant. That that's good though. Like that's exactly what I like it's cool that you can share music in that way, like I, I, yeah it's just weird when yeah. like i don't know if i've sent it to someone 
Or like if someone <laughs> even tells me about a song and then they're like, oh yeah, you shared this with us. I don't know. It's, it's yeah, like a, yeah. a pat on the back in its own little way. Isn't it, it is. <laughs> Definitely. And it's a good way to lock yourself into someone's memory because I feel like if you are introduced to a song through someone, like you're forever going to be like remind like anytime that person listens to that song they're going to be reminded of you i think for me at least i don't know about you i don't know if, if you ever yeah. definitely yeah you always attach the the sharer oh well i do i do as well like, yeah, attach yeah. the sharer to that piece of music as well which is quite interesting mm. um so yeah so we'll stick it on um and then we'll come back to the the podcast and discuss it a little bit uh a little bit more so what did you think of that then adam <laughs> quite the experience um <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh obviously i've heard obviously i've heard it before um from you but uh like watching the video and actually focusing on it it's uh it's so 2000s <laughs> like it's it's like everything about it like i'm thinking a lot about the music video um but even the sound like it's like that fireflies <laughs> era um that's such a good comparison like it's the same kind of uh like s- s- weird synthy kind of pop yeah age i guess of that time 100 percent um and and even yeah exactly and um just the aesthetics of it and stuff i just it just it all screams that era but uh yeah and it's interesting though because like um i'd say the lyric like the vocalist I'd, i'd i must admit i didn't focus too much on the lyrics there because it feels like a very playful song where like the lyrics might not be that important maybe but i mean correct me if i'm wrong um, if, if that's the case, then I may have missed something. Um, but the vocalist, like, I would say he's not like what you were classed traditionally as like a good vocalist, but yeah, it like works really well. Yeah. Um, I a hundred percent agree with that. I think, especially with this song, but I have listened to other, um, other singles by Matt and Kim. And I think I listened to this full album in its entirety at some point, a couple of years ago. You? Um, just because I thought, you know what, I love Daylight so much that like maybe um, I'll get like the same kind of feeling from from the other songs. Um, and don't get us wrong, like they're, they're a really good band um, and I, I did enjoy listening to their music, but it didn't kind of get evoke the same emotions that this one did. And I think that's purely down to the, the time and the place that I first heard it and the nostalgia that's associated with it. Um, because I would say like this song is probably the most nostalgic song for me personally that I, I go back to. Um, oh, it, really? Yeah, and I, I think the reason I go back to it all the time is because it puts us in such a good headspace. Like, uh, I guess what... So I'll, I'll kind of describe um, the, the time and the place that it reminds us of. Um, so, I mean, I might be wrong on the, the, the kind of specific year, but I believe it was like um, 2008, 2009, um, which would kind of hit the nail on the head for the, the like the noughties <laughs> vibe. Um, yeah, yeah. And it was definitely around about that time that I first heard it. Um, and I, I, I don't know the specific date that, that this memory is from, but um, I do remember vividly kind of being out with um, friends um, at the time, which, to be honest, I'm not in touch with any of those friends anymore, um, which is a little bit sad when, when I think about it, because I do always think of them as well when I, when I hear this song. Um, but essentially what we would do is we would get together, there'd be four of us, um, and we would go on the Metro and we would go to, uh, to sell shields. And this was like, um, in the summer holidays from school. So we would have like, um, all the time off the weather was beautiful. Um, and I'll it, just say one thing in there for the viewers sake, yeah. <laughs> for context, if it isn't absolutely <laughs> obvious from our accents, we're based in the Northeast. That's and the true. metro is like the local train system, basically. Yeah, uh, exactly. I, yeah, I should have. I should have definitely clarified that. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's all right. I mean, I'm fully with you. <laughs> I'm just thinking for the poor listener who doesn't have a clue where South Shields is. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so we would we would buy our little metro tickets. We'd jump on, um, and would. I mean, I guess the song doesn't really remind us of the journey too much, um, but it, mm. it's kind of. Um, being in South Shields, um, which is coastal, if you if you're not familiar with South Shields, and they've got a beautiful like um beach, so like it's a sandy beach, um, and it's a massive long stretch of coastline, 
and we used to kind of spend a lot of time there just walking along um so it was like me and a friend and we both had um like girlfriends at the time um that were so we're out in kind of like a little group of four um so it was quite kind of cute in that sense of a, a memory um but it was almost like it didn't feel like we're out as couples it just felt like we're out as a like a group of four friends really um oh that's nice yeah um which so yeah that emotion itself is is nice to to hark back to um but specifically what i remember was we'd been out one day to the beach as normal um and then this was like kind of afterwards so we've been home and then we're kind of walking back to um where one of my friends lives and there's kind of a grassy hill like a a bench uh, not a bench sorry a, a bank um and there's the metro bridge like next to it this grassy bank um and i remember kind of we're all just sat on this grassy bank and that is the vivid image that i get this specific bank every time i hear this song it takes us back to that little location which to be honest is it's nothing special it's literally a hill um where like pedestrians will like walk past every now and then uh cars will drive past but there's nothing there um it just happens to be close to to where my friend lives um and or lived i should say because i don't even think that they live there anymore um but yeah, it it just takes us back there, and it's the this kind of smell of the the kind of freshly cut grass, and um, it being kind of the the die and embers of like the the daytime, um, which I know it's called daylight the song, but it's like <laughs> it almost like is literally describing exactly that feeling of uh, just chasing the sun kind of thing. Um, so yeah, I mean, I would say as a whole the song is like a really uplifting one for us so it always takes us back to like this place of just pure kind of almost um how do you say like kind of naivety um like kind of coming of age i would say um point where like everything nothing could go wrong like every yeah. every day is just like you've got no commitments anything like that um Oh god, that feeling! <laughs> I know, I, man, I know exactly the feeling. I can, I can, transplant the broad strokes of that experience and place them myself in a in exactly the same way. <laughs> like in a, as you say, in the summer holidays, and you're just like sitting on grass, and there's like just a red sky or whatever, and you're just like, you think you just like you just there's no worries, and like you only it's so effortless bliss yeah yeah Yeah. and it i guess for me like listen to it now because it evokes those emotions it gives us that sense of like safety and like security and like everything's kind of going to be okay um that's what it makes us feel like and it also kind of makes us it kind of reminds us to not let things get too too much sometimes like it doesn't have to be so deep all the time. Like you don't have to care so much about this thing that you're stressing over or that you're um, worrying about that's going to happen. It's like, it's going to be okay. Like at the end of the day, the sun's still going to come up tomorrow. Like it's still going to yeah. be a new day. And yeah. Um, yeah. hundred percent. I, I, I definitely feel that. I feel, I feel that I'm getting like secondhand, like it's going to be okay <laughs> vibes. <laughs> um, I feel like, um, cause I don't know. Like, we're, I feel like a lot, most people, our age, like you know, mid twenties onwards, um, feel like um, kind of like you, you're always looking ahead, aren't you? You're always thinking of like, where am I going to be in a week's time? Or even where am I going to be tonight? When am I like, where am I going to be in a week's time? Where am I going to be in a year's time? Like, you're thinking about getting to the end of work, and like you're thinking about going to bed you're thinking about like yo i always find myself thinking more about the future than than i ever felt like in those times where i felt like it was so effortless and it, like it required no thought to just be there in the present like and the, there was no concerns you were just enjoying the moment because it was so enjoyable you weren't thinking like oh like shit i've got to get home and like do my homework or whatever or like what's next year going to be like i mean th- you might have had those concerns at some stage but like I feel like it was so much easier just to be like 
at peace in the moment. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, I agree. And that's why I think it's like also almost that naivety. Um, yeah. We're kind of, I guess, as we mature, we know that that's not the reality of the situation. So whenever we find ourselves being able to appreciate um, kind of free time, shall we say, or um, like a holiday, we know that at some point it's going to end. And I think that can almost um, get in, seep into our minds before it happens. And then you, you don't kind of, you feel yourself sucked out at the moment because you know that, you know, I'm going to have to go to work on Monday or like the kind of reality of the situation comes back again. Um, so you have just a, well, generally as a kid, you have a lot less worries. I mean, you don't have to worry about the adult world, you know what I mean? Um, so yeah, and, and I do yeah. think, the, the song itself almost has that like thread of of like melancholy that runs through it um although it's an uplifting song i feel like there's something about it that's just a little bit like i i really don't know how to describe it it's almost like a, a, a like a melancholic um memory associated with it it's almost like i'll never be able to attain that level of peace and kind of serenity again <laughs> and i don't know if that's why I, that's why it makes us feel like that but um yeah that song always it's so happy but at the same time i'm like it's almost a little bit upsetting that like i can't go back to that moment and relive it mm. i feel that i don't I, I i completely understand that i've got two questions the first is um do you really believe that like that is you'll never be that serene or that at peace again I, I don't think I do. I don't think I fully believe that. Like, th- there's times when I'm so happy and uh, calm in different ways, but I feel like because each um, experience is unique, um, I'll never have that one unique experience again, if that makes sense. It does, yeah. It makes us wonder. It makes complete sense. It makes us wonder if, um, based on what you've just said there, if, like, that's the problem with, like, nostalgia in general. It's like, we had one good experience and now we're having a good experience which is not the same but still good and but because it isn't matching like that previous good experience we're not appreciating how good this different but also good experience is in a way do you know what i mean like in the pre- like adulthood ha- like has other pros that you wouldn't get when you're a child for example using the example we're working with but i, I assume that it would apply to everything yeah um any experiences I, I don't know if that's if that's true but that's my feeling yeah i would stand. i would agree with that and i would say like almost i know if i could go back and speak to myself back then and like tell them about my life now like they might be thinking you know what like i wish i was there you know what i mean like they wanted mm. like i know i would have wanted to to be in the future i always wanted to be older i always wanted to like have independence quote unquote like um so I, I think it's necessary it might be like a memory version of the grass is always greener you know what i mean like yeah yeah you remember that fondness but um it doesn't necessarily mean that you are that you were absolutely bliss and in that state of no worry it's that's just how you remember it um so yeah there's, there's that side of the song um that i think is is lovely but at the same time um when i really ponder on it is is a little bit like kind of oh um I'm a little bit good, but um, yeah. I think one thing I wanted to... Sorry, did you have a, a second question as well? I did. You, it touches on what you've just said. Um, the idea that it's interesting that you identify the melancholy in it. Um, and I wonder if that is like your, as you, as you just said, like your personal experience in the song or if it is literally, um, if there are like some, let's say some, minor notes in the song or whatever like might make it feel um Mm -hmm. a touch melancholy because i didn't get that vibe when i was listening to it um and when you watch the video like it doesn't feel that way but like i guess it it also as you said it's like maybe like it gives it does give coming of age vibes uh in a way and like i guess but i'm wondering if your personal experience is like you just hear it it in a different way like that is not objectively yeah melancholy i I think it probably objectively isn't melancholy, but there's this the kind of I think strings that have been um like synthesized or there's some sort of like effect on the strings 
and mm. it, it gives off this like de de and then de de and it almost like the um the coming down notes so like the uh, is almost like a minory sound i don't know if if it if that's musically correct um because i haven't looked into like what the the notes of the song are or anything like that um but it's the the string section i think that evokes that um that feeling of melancholy for me anyway um whether that's intentional or not um because i guess the um the song itself um i remember when i was researching kind of about kind of the the podcast itself and what i was going to talk about um i pulled out a couple of things that i thought were really interesting um and I'm all right to read this out. Um, it has yeah, yeah. someone's kind I'm of... I'm just yawn, but I swear that's not because I'm bored. <laughs> <laughs> oh, sorry, we'll just end it now if you want. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no. It's nice chatting to you, man. You keep your facts for yourself. <laughs> Wasn't like this when it was your song. No. <laughs> <laughs> all right, then. How about it? So, yeah, I, when I was looking for this, it might have been on um, Genius when I was kind of looking at the, the lyric side of things. Mm. Um, but the, someone as basically wrote um speaks to embracing fun and letting go of responsibility living for the daylight while duties and social norms go out the window um comedic music video um far-fetched but features the the musical duo playing the song in a bed shower dumpster speaks to some truth to the origins of the song daylight um as it was actually recorded in a bedroom and i found that like Ah. when i read that after I already like kind of knew how I felt about it, I was kind of like, wow, like it, that is literally how I imagined it was written, like almost for what I was feeling as a result of listening to it. Um, does that make sense? Uh, I think so. Like I, I was with you up until you said it, the last, the last sentence. Okay. So essentially like, I guess what I expected the song to have been written, like, in the context. So I, I imagine it was written... Yeah, like, them just in the bedroom, like, messing around. Yeah, exactly. And Yeah, yeah. Like, the playful side of it, and, like, that's how it made us feel as well. So, like, the fact that they embraced that so much in the music video and, like, in the writing process, doing it in a, out yeah. in the bedroom. It's not like they're trying to tell a story, like, about, as they say, like, discarding responsibility, but then actually they've, like religiously recorded this it's probably just been like hashed together like he's actually just been sitting there on his keyboard with synth sounds being like that sounds mint and she's just like <laughs> bass drum and like <laughs> you know like, yeah. it, just, it just comes together very organically i imagine i'm just completely speculating <laughs> <laughs> got no idea how it was recorded yeah I, i've got no idea but like yeah something like that and i just thought like that you know when i read that i was kind of like oh that that makes total sense um so I, yeah, I, I like that um, that side of it as well. Um, but one other thing that I wanted to do, which I thought might be cool, um, is on the YouTube video itself, um, is just have like a quick pull out of some of the, the comments because I was scrolling down and out of interest of like nostalgia, like you know how sometimes on a, a music video, someone's like, um, tell the song, story. Da, da, yeah, yeah. Um, and there's so many people that are talking about how nostalgic the song is. And I don't know if that's the case on like every big music video and whether everyone's always going to be like that. But when I put it on before and I noticed the comments, I was like, is it something about this song in particular that is so like nostalgic and that is evoking kind of similar times in my life as well? Um, so I'll try and find one because there was... So even just this one here, I was a freshman in high school when this came out. Hearing it now r- makes me remember what it's like to feel again. And like... Christ, yeah. Like that would have been around about like the similar age. I mean, slightly different age, but like school time, you know what I mean? That was when they first heard it. Um, someone else saying, uh, watching this makes me sad. It makes me realize how easy life was when I was so young. And it's a great song. And that's kind of like what we were just talking about, like carefree as a youngster. Um, yeah. Honestly, there's there's yeah, so yeah. many comments. It's so interesting just reading through them um, because they're all like so similar and everyone's like, in a way, kind of having this experience that we're having now 
like talking to each other about what it made them feel. And that's happening in a in a comment section on a YouTube video, which I know might sound a bit like uh, uh not cliche, but a bit of a weird forum to like share things about your personal life. But it's mm. so nice that a, a song can bring people together like that. Yeah, it's interesting. I bet in the city, even like us talking about it now, um, for sure. It's an interesting, it's an interesting, as you say, forum. The YouTube comments because you do get a lot of, a lot of that. I find not necessarily the sort of nostalgia we're talking about now, but like, um, yeah, people sharing like really intimate experiences, like really opening themselves up on this platform. Um, and yeah, it's I suppose there's not been a time in the past where that's ever been an option, if I'm not mistaken. Um, I think you're right. Yeah. But uh, in terms of this song, I wonder if it is because of the fact that it is very much like a coming of age song. That's like people would have listened to it around people who have listened to it were probably around the age you described. And like that's like such a rich age for memories, I think that like people and then it means that there's, there's probably is. I think you're probably right that, that it is particularly attractive for people to reflect on is my feeling. Uh, I wonder, I wonder if some, some anthropologist could do some research on that or something. <laughs> I'm sure they would prove we're wrong. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Completely, utterly wrong. It's actually because of the downfall of society that it, that it sounds really... Uh, you know, but awesome. like, I, I do love the, the fact that like people are being so open and honest. I know it's like, I guess there's that element of anonymity about it as well because not everyone is like kind of shown who they are and it, it's certainly not an in-person conversation. So there's that side of it. And, you know, people can be like that on, on Reddit and Twitter even or any other social media, to be honest. Um, but it's, it's nice that it's over a song like this. And um, there's some really like kind of intimate comments on there. I'm not going to read them all out, but um, even if, if you were to just go through and I'll read through, you'd be like, wow, that's quite a personal experience. I'm surprised that you're openly sharing that. Um, but it's so nice. Definitely. I agree. I, I've been in like, I've, when I've been like down, there's been many times that I've been like quite down and then I've looked at like, I've put on like some nostalgic songs or whatever and then looked in the comments and found some like someone who's having a very similar or very relatable experience. And there's something nice about like, just that kind of like, I mean, you already get it in the song, I guess often that someone's having a relatable experience but then to hear it from like let's say a normal person um 100 it's very it's it's reassuring isn't it yeah definitely um <laughs> reading one of them and say like, damn this song banged in 2008 and it still does in 2021 <laughs> <laughs> i can reassure them it still does in 2022 as well <laughs> Oh, I could re- honestly, I could read through them all day, so I'm gonna close that down. <laughs> <laughs> um, but one other thing that I wanted to talk about about it, um, part of the reason that I think the nostalgic um feeling comes about as well, um, is because, um, when I was researching this, um, I found out that the FIFA Ten soundtrack had a remix of this song in the soundtrack, and I definitely had FIFA Ten. And I definitely would have heard that song. So imagine that, like, I've played FIFA and unknowingly heard this song or, like, a remix of it. And then eventually when I stumble upon the actual song itself in kind of down a a YouTube rabbit hole, which was how I found the song originally, I believe. Um, And then I get this feeling of nostalgia when I listen to it for the first time because I may have heard it elsewhere without even knowing and yeah 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 that's really interesting yeah and I was wondering like I bet there's been other times when that's been the case as well like where almost like your nostalgia is misplaced or like you, f- you feel like you're deja vu and in a, like a song and it's actually like because you have actually heard this song before you just weren't being like aware of it at the time um, 100% I think like it's the oh, people sample each other all the time. Like um, the amount of times you hear like a track and you're like, "That's this." Like, or uh, I, it happened to us yesterday. In fact, I can't remember, I can't remember what the track was. Um, 
oh that's gonna kill us <laughs> that's gonna kill us um oh yeah it was um eminem toy soldiers i didn't know the track on that with even the introduction part is like just sampled off it just that's just a song a yeah, different song. yeah um and i feel like we're, we're exposed to that all the time so i can definitely i bet that is a, i bet there's probably a name for that phenomenon um it's quite interesting yeah it's um yeah like i say it's one of those songs that like i do come back to every now and then um and the nostalgic is the nostalgia is probably the main reason i come back to it um there is yeah. elements of the song obviously that's like might not be everyone's taste um if you're into certain genres of music, you're definitely going to listen to the song and be like, yeah, this isn't for me. But I, th- I think that's also the beauty of like music and especially music that are attributed or attached to memories is that for you, this could be like the best song in the world because of how it makes you feel, even though musically it's not brilliant or, um, or it's not like critically acclaimed or anything like that. But I think it can be so personal um, and the fact that these two people that wrote it, I've, I've got no idea that I even ex- exist. Um, I think that's kind of cool in a way that people across the world living sometimes in a different era can touch you that like kind of deeply and closely for, s- for such a long period of your life with one piece of music. Um, I think that's fairly, fairly magical. Like It is incredible, especially when you think... That's, yeah, I think you've described that so well. Especially when you think that some of these musicians might be average people working normal, like normal nine to five jobs or something because they never quite made it as, they were never big enough to live off the music, which I think is uh, often, or sometimes the case. Um, and as you say, like, it, it just takes one little track and I like, have a small little subgroup of people just latching onto it and really appreciating it. And uh, they'll never know, like how, as you say, how meaningful that might be for them um that's a really lovely thought yeah um i well it, it's one of those like i say one of those songs i always will go back to and i'll always have it in my locker but hopefully by kind of sharing it there as well like it's maybe someone else will, will have that experience when they listen to it um they might have even heard it before so i found it pretty cool anyway well thank you for sharing that dan it's an interesting track um yeah, not what i expected for the first track but i think it fits i think it's a good Good time to start. Um, yeah, yeah. It was one of the like the uh, there's so many to choose from, and I was kind of thinking like which one shall I go with first? But I guess I wanted to start with like a, a kind of positive, um, yeah. a positive experience of of a memory attached to this song, um, rather than something that's um, do not necessarily doom and gloom, but something that's a little bit more negative because I do want positive discussions as well as like discussions about struggles and things like that so um oh great 100 percent agreed yeah and like i say a great choice <laughs> thank you uh, appreciate it <laughs> yeah. um sound so shall we shall we call it a day for this one um shall we sign off yes i think we should do we have a sign off is that a thing <laughs> that we have i don't think we'll have no, <laughs> no i guess no. we'll just say bye to everyone and and uh toodaloo and all that <laughs> all right that sounds good to me so, man. Well, it's been a pleasure, Dan. <laughs> Thanks very much, mate. I appreciate it. Yeah. Thanks for Thanks listening. Thanks, everyone, for listening. See you later. Bye.